Thank you so much to everyone for joining our first generation webinar. Um, I'm very, very excited to have you all here tonight and I will go ahead and just get started. If you cannot hear me currently talking, please go ahead and call in. Um, we also will be recording this live presentation and posting that recording to our website and our YouTube page. We will also, if you registered for this webinar, send you an email tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that in case you ever wanna come back and reference this, or if you have any friends who have any questions about that kind of thing too. So I'll leave this on here for just a moment, just in case anybody needs it. All right, once again, welcome. Thank you guys so much for attending our webinar tonight. My name is Anna. I'm an admissions counselor here at MSU. I am also a first generation student, so I'm very excited for all of you to join us. And I'm very, very excited to talk about what kind of resources, scholarships, everything that we have available for first generation students. So first, I just wanted to talk about what we'll actually cover over this webinar. The first portion is going to be a definition of what first generation actually means at MSU. Then a general admissions timeline. We'll talk about some first generation scholarships. And then I will turn it over to uh, Mackenzie Spence, our program coordinator of TRIO Student Success Services, so that she can talk about resources. And then I'll throw it over to the floor to talk about the First Generation Students Association. And we will finish it out with a live Q&A. Uh, with a couple of our first generation students at MSU, as well as me and Mackenzie Spence. So first generation will mean a little bit different at every school that you talk to. So just so you know, this is our definition at MSU. This is a pretty inclusive umbrella, but I would definitely check with every school that you talk to over the course of your junior and senior year, definitely ask them, what does first generation mean at your university? For us, first generation students are defined as students whose parents have not completed a four year college degree. So even if your parents started college but never finished, or if they did a two year degree but never got that bachelor's degree, if they never went to college, if they went to the military instead, even if your siblings went to college, you still count as a first generation student at MSU. You can go ahead and indicate that very easily on your application. It's just a button that you push. If you fall under this umbrella and you haven't uh, applied to MSU, then you're definitely gonna wanna indicate yourself as first gen right away on your application. And if you've already applied to MSU but never clicked that button, go ahead and contact our office. I will leave the Office of Admissions phone number and email at the end, as well as my personal phone number and email. So go ahead and contact us. We'll help you get that figured out. So this is just a general admissions timeline. I wanted to give every one of you of what you need to complete over the course of your senior year before you head off to college. This will be different again at every school that you talk to. So deadlines will be a little bit different. The order of this might be a little bit different, but in general, this is what you need to do before becoming a student at a university. So first and foremost is applying for admission. Some schools do have a deadline for an application. A lot of times that might be before May of your senior year. So if you're talking to other schools, ask them if they have one or not. MSU does not have a deadline. We are on a rolling admissions basis. So you really have the freedom over the course of your senior year to figure out what you wanna do, where you wanna go. You can go ahead and apply to MSU. We also are non-committal. I'll touch on that again later, but nothing at MSU is taken as a formal commitment up until you actually register for classes. So we won't assume that you're coming till you're in a seat paying tuition. So applying for admission does not mean that you're going to attend MSU. You still have the freedom to decide. After that is sending in your test scores or transcripts. At some schools, they ask you for an ACT or SAT score. That's a big test to test your knowledge and um, comprehensive levels. Some schools require those, some schools don't. Some schools also ask for a transcript so that they can see exactly what classes you have taken in high school in order to be admitted to a university. At MSU, we don't require any of those when you first apply. When you apply to MSU, we ask you for your self-reported GPA from high school and your self-reported class rank. At the end of your senior year, we'll prompt you to send along your transcript, but it does have to be official. So make sure that you're sending those directly from your school. If you're taking 
any kind of college credit at all, um, definitely send that directly from that institution as well. If you're taking AP, IB, send that directly from their testing agencies. And then if you are taking the ACT or SAT, please go ahead and send that to us. It's not required. We are test optional at MSU, but these are our school codes. Just in case you are looking to send those along, we can use them for admission. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this webinar, I apologize, but we do have a Q&A feature that's active right now, and I have admissions counselors that are on there. If you have any questions at all, feel free to just drop it in that Q&A, and uh, they will be able to answer those questions for you. Sorry for, getting, for forgetting that at the beginning. So the next step is applying for housing. At some schools, it is required that you live on campus, whether that is for your first year, for your first two years, for all four years. Again, this is something that will be different at each school. So make sure that you're researching into the institution that you're looking for. At MSU, it is required to live on campus for your very first year. So for that first year, you do have to fill out a separate housing application. That housing application is, uh, is assigned on a first come, first served basis. So if you apply sooner, then you're just more likely to get your preference of um, housing options. So with that, we have 12 different residence hall options across campus. That housing website is available at any time online. You can explore those options without ever having to visit campus. We also just did uh, about a month ago a living on campus webinar. So if you go to our YouTube page, you'll be able to find it very easily. It's just Montana State University Office of Admissions and it says living on campus. You can watch that go over a couple of our different housing options and some more information about our housing application. If you are a senior, this housing application is already open for you. It opened on October 1st and at MSU it has a priority deadline of March 1st. That priority deadline doesn't mean that we won't have a spot for you. We have to have a spot for you if you're coming to MSU, since you are required to live on campus for your first year. It just means we might not be able to take your preferences into account. So I would definitely go ahead and make sure you're applying before that March 1st date. For MSU, that does come with um, a $300 non-refundable deposit. We offer an option for that if that causes financial need as well. And I'll touch on that again in a second here. So further on that general admissions timeline, I do recommend that everybody fills out a FAFSA. If you've never heard of a FAFSA before, it's the free application for federal student aid. So this is the only way that you can gain access to things like a Pell Grant, uh, which is a federal grant uh, and federal loans as well. So this is changing this year. If you are a, a junior, sophomore, freshman, anything like that, hopefully it will go back to normal next year. But just so you all know, if you are a senior this year, this is going to come out much later this year. We will also be hosting a paying for school webinar on November 15th. And I really encourage all of you to go ahead and register for that with us. We'll walk you through um, our scholarships at MSU. We'll walk you through that new FAFSA process as well, because it gets a little bit more complicated with this new FAFSA that's coming out. So next year, um, we'll still be hosting that, but that FAFSA hopefully will go back to normal. So that's supposed to come out in about December, and then it will have a priority date at MSU of February 1st. Each school might have a different priority date. So again, this is something that you kind of have to research as you're going through um, your senior year, but every school might have a different priority date that's set by the institution themselves, not by their state or by the government. So definitely check on those. Um, you can still apply for FAFSA after that priority date. That's just our priority filing date for this year. After that is applying for scholarships. Many institutions offer departmental scholarships, merit-based awards, or tuition waivers that you might uh, apply for. So definitely take a look at any school's website, head to their scholarships page and see what they offer. At MSU, we offer automatic scholarships based off of your GPA from high school. And if you're a transfer student, we offer that same automatic scholarship at just a different amount for transfer students. So definitely uh, head to our website to go ahead and explore those. We'll touch on that again for our paying for school webinar next week. And if you have already applied to MSU, you might have already received your merit-based scholarship from us. So um, definitely explore departmental scholarships at each school that you're going to look at. Um, 
And then the last one on here is attending an orientation session. So at MSU, this is required for all incoming students, and it looks a little different um, for freshmen versus transfer students. So if you are a first year student, if you're just coming out of high school, it is required to come to an in-person session. That is where you register for classes for the very first time. Um, orientation might not be required, at other schools, for transfer students at MSU, it is still required. They do have an online portion typically. So um, definitely take a look at that, kind of explore that option as well, just so that you know where you actually need to be um, over the course of the summer before you head off to college. So this is some MSU specific stuff. As I mentioned, MSU does require housing for your very first year. So please go ahead and apply for housing as soon as possible if you're interested in coming in fall of 2024. That priority deadline is March 1st. As I've mentioned before, if you apply after March 1st, we will still have space for you. You will absolutely be able to join us in the fall, but we might not be able to take your preferences into account. It is on a first come first serve basis, and it does come with a $300 non-refundable deposit. So if that pre presents any financial hardship for you, I really recommend reaching out to our housing department directly. If one of my admissions counselors doesn't mind dropping the housing email in the chat so that anybody can reach out to them, uh, I think that that would be super helpful. Thank you guys. Um, after that is applying for scholarships. So two of our merit-based awards do have very specific deadlines. And these are very hard deadlines. So the presidential scholarship at MSU is a full tuition waiver and, and a housing stipend as well. Uh, that's offered through our honors college and it is a little bit of a tedious application. So I really recommend getting on that very fast um, just so that you have time to fill it out over the course of the next month. That is due in one month on December 1st, and that is a very, very hard deadline. If you're interested in exploring that at all, please go to our website, um, click on undergraduate admissions, scholarships, and then you'll be able to take a look and see what that looks like at MSU. We also, also take part in the WUI program or the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. If you are from a Western state, you might have heard of this before, but just so you all know, WUI, the program, is a blanket over several states, but the WUI scholarship is a little bit different at each school that you're going to talk to. So at some schools, it's a competitive scholarship. At other schools, it's an automatic tuition rate. For us at MSU, it is a competitive scholarship that you have to separately fill out. It allows you to pay 1.5 times in state tuition at MSU. Last year, it equaled to be about a $19,000 scholarship off of tuition. These two that I mentioned, the Presidential and the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship, are not stackable on top of the other merit-based awards that you might receive. Our automatic merit-based awards are called the Achievement Award and the Montana Premier Scholarship. These two are not stackable on top of that other merit-based award. If you are from out of state and you apply for that WUI and you receive it, we'll go ahead and assume you want more money, not less money, so we'll just give you the higher award, which will always be the WUI. Uh, same thing with the presidential. The presidential is a full tuition waiver. It's the closest thing you can get to a full ride at MSU. So if you receive that, we'll assume that you're gonna want that money, so we'll just go ahead and replace your achievement award or your premier scholarship with that as well. So that WUI scholarship is due on January 3rd. Again, that is a very hard deadline, so please make sure that you have your application in before then. Um, those are available through our CAP scholarships page. Again, if you go to montana.edu and find our scholarships page, you'll be able to get that very easily. If one of my admissions counselors would drop uh, that scholarship page in the chat as well so that people can explore those, I would greatly appreciate it. The last thing that I wanted to mention about uh, the MSU specific dates and deadlines is that we are non-committal, as I've mentioned. So if you apply to MSU and you decide to choose another school, that's totally okay. We're not going to hold you to it until you're in a seat paying tuition. So there's no formal commitment process. By completing these steps on this admissions timeline, you will have the opportunity to let us know you're still interested in coming, but we won't assume you're here until you're here. So definitely um, take all of those steps. Feel free to have the freedom to decide over the course of your senior year. It's ultimately up to you. The whole goal is to go to college, period. So we're happy to help uh, in any way that we can, especially by keeping um, our process non-committal. 
So this is some MSU specific uh, application details. So I have this separated by in-state versus out-of-state. So this means if you're graduating from a Montana high school, you are a Montana resident, you are an in-state student, our application at MSU is free for all Montanan students, always, all the time, which is awesome. So uh, you guys can go ahead and apply at any time for free within the state of Montana. Uh, we also have a very, very awesome scholarship called the Treasure State Scholarship, which I will touch on a little bit more in a minute here. But that Treasure State Scholarship is um, an automatic scholarship if you indicate that you are first generation on your application to the university. So it's a very easy way to get some extra money for school. And again, I'll talk about that here in just a second. We also, for out-of-state students, do have an application fee. The application fee is $38. So we don't uh, take the Common App at all. Our application is only available on our website. So you can only pay that application fee to us. If you have qualified for fee waivers at other schools or if the uh, application fee causes any kind of immediate financial need for you, please let us know. You can follow this QR code or the link that I've put here to go to our fee deferral request form. The fee deferral request form is where you can fill out that information and request that your application fee is deferred until your first year, uh, your first bill as a student here at MSU. So it's a very easy way to kind of take that off your plate right now and wait until you become um, a first year student here. Um, that's a really great way to, you know, kind of open the door for you if you're interested. So um, again, all of this will be available on our YouTube. So if you ever need to come back to this and reference this again, this QR code, the link, everything will be available on our YouTube. So now I wanna transition into talking about first generation scholarships. We at MSU are a land grant institution, which means that way back in 1862, the state of Montana needed somewhere to teach the sons and daughters of the working class. They chose us and we've been trying to give back to the state of Montana as much as possible ever since then. And that includes making education accessible and affordable within the state of Montana. So we do offer first generation scholarships specifically for our Montanan students. So if you take a look up at the top here, our treasure state scholarship is what I was talking about earlier. This is an automatic scholarship if you self identify as a first generation student on your application to the university. If you are from Montana, you have already applied and you did not do this, like I said, our admissions contact info will be at the end of this. So please go ahead and contact us. We'll be able to help you fix that. Um, so this is a $1,500 per year scholarship and it is automatically renewable for all four years at MSU. This is also stackable with merit or need-based age. So if you receive a merit scholarship like our Montana Premier Scholarship, you can kind of stack this on top of it. It gives you extra money to go to school. It really opens that door for you. That's what we're all about here at MSU. It also can stack on top of your need-based aid. So if you are determined um, financially needy by the government, you can go ahead, um, fill out that FAFSA. If you get grants and loans, that's great. We'll take those. You can also stack this scholarship on top of that. We also offer what's called the Full Circle Scholarship. So this one gets a little bit more specific than our last one. You do have to be a first generation college student in order to get this scholarship. This is available on our CAT scholarships page. If one of my admissions counselors would also uh, drop the CAT scholarships link, I'm sorry, I meant to put a QR code here. If you would drop that link in the chat, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, the Full Circle Scholarship those students have to be a Hilleman Scholar. And the Hilleman Scholar program is for low income or rural um, Montanan students within the state of Montana to make sure that we're making education accessible for them as well. If you're interested in that program, I recommend uh, going to our Alan Yarnell Center for Student Success or the AYCSS at MSU. So you have to be a Hilleman Scholar in order to get this uh, scholarship. You also have to be from a rural Montana city with a population of less than 3,000 and be a first time incoming freshman student. So that is the way that you can get this scholarship. All of that is um, available on that CAT scholarships page. That full application is there. So for out of state students and for my in state students, 
I want to give you guys just a little bit of a view of what it's like to apply for first generation focused scholarships. So two scholarship websites that I have listed here are really phenomenal uh, warehouse sites for scholarships where you can go on there and you can just take a look at every scholarship that they offer thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, you can tell just by the numbers here, there's some $10,000 scholarships for first generation students. All I did with this website is I went on there and the only information that I gave them was that I was a first generation student for fall of 2024. And this is just one example of the 47 scholarships that came up for me. So please go ahead and search for first generation scholarships. I really recommend that you do so because you can stack any outside scholarships on top of each other that you like. You can, uh, we will take all of those at MSU. For other schools, it might be a little bit different. They might have um, a cap on that, but if you wanna stack it on top of each other to cover your tuition at MSU, we can definitely help you do so. They also have several scholarships available for all kinds of things. You can get a bird watching scholarship. You could get an archery scholarship. You can get a scholarship for all kinds of things on here, and you can also search by major. So I really recommend going to both of these sites, both fastweb.com and scholarships.com, and filling out their general applications to see what scholarships you are matched with on those sites. So uh, especially for my out-of-state students, since you don't qualify for that treasure state scholarship, I really, really recommend uh, filling these out and sending those to us as fast as possible um, because we can stack all of those on top of each other. So to move away from the general admission stuff, I wanna go ahead and throw it over to Mackenzie Spence uh, so that she can talk about our TRIO student support services. Mackenzie, go ahead. Fantastic. Hello, everybody. My name is Mackenzie Spence. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the program coordinator for the TRIO student support services here on campus. I'm also a proud first generation college graduate. I graduated from Montana State University in the spring of 2021, um, and then I've been working at the university ever since. So um, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about what TRIO is um, and what we do for students. Um, I don't have control of the slides, so if somebody, there we go, perfect. <laughs> um, so TRIO Student Support Service is a student support program here on campus. Um, it is housed under the Department of Education here at Montana State University, and we are a federally funded grant program through the Federal Department of Education. Our main goals are to increase the retention rate and the graduation rates of our TRIO scholars. Um, and the main way that we do this is to help our students utilize campus resources. Um, it is a fantastic program. I love it. I work there, obviously. Um, but here are just a couple of things that we do in our office. So when you are a TRIO scholar, you get one-on-one -on -one advising with our retention specialist, Meredith, um, and you can meet with her as many times of semester as you would like. She is there for you for quite literally everything, whether it's academics or uh, trying to figure out how to talk to a roommate, um, how to find off-campus housing once you finish your first year, finding scholarships, um, talk about life in general. She's just really there to help you get through anything that you may um, be going through at that moment in time. We also offer all of our scholars 10 free hours of Smarty Cat tutoring um, per week. So that normally costs students $2 per session. Um, so with that, you're saving $20 a week, which can really add up over time. We also work very hard to get our scholars into undergraduate research. Um, as Anna had said, MSU is a R1 research institution. So we really want our students to get the research opportunities that are out there um, and really connect them so they're able to do that. We do a ton of kind of unique experiences with our students as well. For example, in the fall, right after classes start, we do go whitewater rafting. In the spring, we do a ski trip. Um, 
We also have one on one meetings with the provost where we bring in our students. The provost comes in, meets our students, talks about what they do. Our students are able to make those connections with people that they normally wouldn't be able to um, or wouldn't know to if they weren't in our program. We also offer a lot of leadership and skill building opportunities as well. This may look like how do I budget my time? How do I budget in general? Um, just how to do things that may not be in a class that you would take, but you're able to go to either a webinar or a workshop um, as a TRIO student and kind of learn these skills. We also offer resources to our students, whether that is loaner laptops. Um, obviously, we have all of the school supplies in our office. If you ever need anything to come in, we always have free snacks, free coffee, tea, that kind of stuff in our office, as well as a private study space, silent study space, as well as a group study space if you want to hang out with your friends. Um, we have a lot of students that come in every single day and utilize our group study space and they're able to just kind of hang out, work on their homework, um, and bring their friends along with them. Finally, we partner a lot with the Alan Yarnell Center for Student Success. Um, so they obviously are, not obviously, they are the ones that um, set up all of the Smarty Cats tutoring. They also have the Office of Financial Education, which we plug our students into um, with them a lot. They hold a etiquette dinner every single year. So we pay for our students to attend that. Um, so it's free for them. So we really try to plug our students into that resource as well. So we partner very closely with them. So just a couple of our numbers that we have. So we are a federally funded grant program, which means that we can only serve 140 students a year. In the 2021-2022 school year, we had that 140 TRIO scholars. In the fall, we were able to bring in 45 new scholars um, into the program, which is about the number that we bring in every year is between 40 and 50 um, new students. You do not need to be a incoming freshman. We also take students for every single year of school that they're in. Um, our persistence rate, so persistence from year one to year two, it was 81% in the 2021-22 school year. 92% um, of our students had good academic standing. And our six-year graduation rate for our students in the 21-22 school year was 67%. Um, all of these numbers are higher than the general MSU population. Um, so we know that our program works for these students. So how do you apply? We do have an application process because we can only serve a certain amount of students with our grant. So for this upcoming school year, um, our application will open in January and close in June. And you will be in the cohort that will begin in fall of 2024. So to be eligible for this program and to be a TRIO scholar, you have to be a full-time undergraduate student at Montana State University and at least one of um, the following. So you either have to be first generation, check, <laughs> um, Pell Grant eligible or eligible for federal assistance in some way, have a documented disability and or be a veteran. And again, you only need one of um, those qualifiers to qualify for the program. Um, so that is fantastic. You don't have to have multiple um, qualifiers to be able to apply and be in the program. Um, something else that I wanted to talk about. So on top of my duties as the TRIO program coordinator, I am also the committee chair for the first generation committee on campus that is comprised of faculty and staff. And then we do have a couple of students on that committee as well um, to bring in their perspectives. With that, I am on the working team for the first scholars network um, journey that Montana State University is on right now. Currently, we are a network member for this first scholars journey, which just means that we have shown commitment to first generation students and we want to continue um, that commitment. 
So when you are here in um, next fall or in the future, we will be moving towards our champion campus status. So we will be becoming a first gen forward institution starting in June of 2024, which is a, just a national designation that, that states that MSU is committed to our first generation students. Um, so that's something super exciting that we are working towards and that proves that MSU is um, here to support this demographic of students that is continually growing um, as time goes on. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me um, at trio SSS at Montana.edu. You can also check out our website, um, Montana.edu slash trio SSS. If you prefer phone calls, feel free to give me a call. That's my number on the screen. And if you're on campus, feel free to come by, say hello. We're located in Reed Hall on the third floor. Um, we have offices kind of that span a hallway. Um, our main office is just, a, you can see it at the top of the stairs and it's room 314. Um, but if you go to any of these rooms, somebody should be in there. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I will also be kind of manning the Q&A um, on this webinar as well. So if you have any questions about TRIO, feel free to throw them over there and I will answer them as they come in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mackenzie, for introducing us to TRIO and everything that you guys offer for first gen students on campus. I would now like to throw it over to Floor. Floor is a member of our First Generation Students Association on campus. Floor, I will go ahead and let you uh, take the floor here. Hi, can you hear me? Oh yeah, you oh, can. No. <laughs> it's just that we have two laptops right here. Okay, hopefully the sound is better now. Um, we cannot turn on our camera. Please let me know if there's this weird sound still or if- You're good, we can hear okay. you just fine. Okay, well, just as a recap, um, we are the first generation students association. I wish we could turn on our camera, um, but that's fine. I am here with Natalie. DeMarco and also Jesse Chadwick. So they'll join me later with some information. So we are the first generation students association. This is the first first gen student club at MSU, which is kind of like a big accomplishment. And you are reading our mission statement right there. So our plan is to provide a welcoming environment, a welcoming place, group, community to every first gen on campus. We have different coordinated activities. We plan many events uh, in the during the whole year. And we have this uh, like goal for setting big, meaningful, um, you know, activities and, and I don't know, like community building and, and connections on campus. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Thank you. So the support that we do is having this group. We meet every other week. We are 70 members and we are not only. Oh, I don't know if the sound is doing OK, but well, we are not only 70 members. I mean, we're not only students. We have also allies, which are students or staff members who are not specifically first gen, but also ambassadors. So there is our Instagram. You can follow us and, and get to, to know the activities that we have um, every semester. And also you can scan that QR code and it will redirect you to our um, student club profile in Cats Connect. Okay, you can click on the next one. Alrighty, um, my name is Natalie DeMarco. Um, I am the vice president and also co-founder of the First Generation Students Association. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the recent activities we've done. So a lot of our acti activities involve like outreach and engagement. Um, we really just are trying to build that sense of community on campus for first gens. Since we realized last year that there really wasn't a whole lot besides trio students with sports services. Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, so yeah, our outreach, um, we participate in Catapalooza, which you all um, will be invited to if you attend MSU. 
Um, in the fall, it is basically just this big fair of events where all clubs, uh, student clubs and organization and programs uh, go out on Centennial Mall, which is like a main meeting circle outside for everyone. And we just uh, give a little uh, speech. There's free prizes. As you can see in the first photo, we're giving out a free tumbler, uh, lots of free merch here. Um, we also do engagement and social events um, with other members and allies. In the bottom left photo, you can see we have a table at the library giving out snacks and coffee. Um, we are engaging uh, for certain events we're hosting, like the student panels and um, other things like that. Uh, our development, so we do a lot of workshops. Last year, we did a whole series of first-gen workshops that focused on nutrition and how to build a resume and mental health. Um, lots of participation in those. Again, free food, as always. <laughs> um, but yeah, we also want to try and help first-gens get more development in their academ academic and professional careers and where they want to take that as far as next steps. Um, we're also focused, as we know, that all first-gen students come from different backgrounds. Um, on cultural aspects. So over the summer, we hosted our Independence Fiesta, uh, celebrating the independence of Peru, Venezuela, mm -hmm. Colombia, and Argentina. Um, it was a very big event. We had 200 people, right? We had over 200 people go, and President um, Cruzado also went. Um, it was a big uh, dance, music, lots of cultural foods. It was very fantastic. Um, and this year, we're hoping to host more events like that, so you can find us out there. Um, we have flyers all over campus, follow us on social media to hear more about our previous events and everything like that. Um, and with that, if you could take it to the next slide, please. Thank you. Awesome. So my name is Jesse Chadwick, and I am one of the co-social media officers on the FUSA. Um, so we are a completely safe place for first gens at MSU. Um, we meet in the disc center like every other Wednesday, um, but that can obviously change, but um, it's always a great space to come in, like, you know, meet, do projects, whatever you need to do. Um, we like meet and just kind of talk about how our semesters are going and things like that, just catch up and maybe point each other towards good resources on campus. It's just a really good environment for everyone. We do have some upcoming events um, that we're hosting. So our first one is the first gen experiences. Um, it is a student panel in the sub building um, where they're just going to talk about their experiences and things of being a first gen student um, and just kind of help spread awareness about being a first generation first generation student. As well as we have a speed networking event um, where we will be in the inspiration hall um, and we will have about six participants with photos about themselves and they'll give a little speech about being a first-gen student, their experiences, um, their path, what inspires them. Um, and then they'll get some time with questions. So if you have questions, you can ask them um, things about being a first-gen student, um, network, make opportunities, and it's a super amazing thing to go to. So in case you have time, in case you are in town, you are more than welcome to attend any of those events or both, which will be even better. So that way you will get more familiar with, with what we do and with the current first gen students here, as, also, uh, as well as supportive staff, faculty. And yes, please let us know if you have any questions. Thanks. Awesome, thank you all so much for giving us some more information on the First Gen Student Association. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it right over to our live Q&A here. I do have my chat window open, so if any of you have any questions for us as first generation students, as first generation graduates, please go ahead and drop them in the chat now. I just wanted to say, first and foremost, if you have any questions about really anything, all our contact information will be at the end here. So you're you're welcome to go ahead and reach out to us with any questions that you might have. Um, I also wanna just reiterate, Every question that you might have might already be answered on our YouTube page. I really recommend that you go and watch our other webinars. They can be very, very helpful as you're kind of going through this college 
uh, admissions process, through the decision process, especially if, you know, especially if you've never done this before, but especially if you're not able to actually come to campus and get that information. Um, so I do have a couple of questions. And the first one, I will go ahead and direct uh, directly towards Mackenzie because it's very trio specific. Um, so I think we did have a question in the chat here. If you don't mind, could you just go ahead and define what a trio student is for us? Yes, absolutely. Um, so a trio scholar is a student who applies for the program. Um, like I said, our application is open January to June. Um, gets accepted by our office. Um, we send out acceptance emails um, late mid or late June. Um, and these students are students that are um, either first generation, um, Pell Grant eligible, um, or receiving federal assistance in some form, um, or have a disability that's documented through disability services. Um, those are really the only requirements that we have is that you fall into one of those three. Um, and then to be a TRIO scholar, all you have to do is fill out the application and then be accepted um, by the program here at Montana State University. And then you are a TRIO scholar um, for the life for your lifetime here at Montana State University. So you don't have to reapply every year. As soon as you're in, you're in until you graduate. And if you leave and then come back, um, you're still in the program. Perfect, thank you, Mackenzie. Uh, I appreciate it. And then Floor, Natalie, Jesse, I, I have one question that's very specific towards you all as well. Um, how would students go about finding other first generation students on campus if they wanted to network with them if they wanted to be advocates for each other where might they be able to find uh, first generation students hi um yeah i'm more than happy to answer that um i would say honestly going to our meetings would be a fantastic way to um connect and engage with other first gen students but also um I hear a lot of people in the chat are interested in going to see the TRIO office in person. I personally think that's also a great idea. Um, but really just going on campus and honestly just asking your peers, like, are you a first gen? Hey, there's this event we heard that's happening this week. Um, do you want to go with me? Um, kind of putting yourself out there. Um, grab a buddy or whatever. That's always the best move. <laughs> um, and going to those events and asking questions, that's really like the greatest way to get more in action with other first gen students. Um, so yeah, especially like for the first two weeks of November, um, the FGSA and the committee that Mackenzie and myself are also on, and so is our president floor, um, we're hosting all sorts of events the first two week of November. So if you guys are gonna be here at all, which I'm not sure when the tours are going on for MSU, unfortunately, but um, if they are going on within these next two weeks or so, um, definitely attending one of our events would be the best way to go. And there's flyers all over campus. And there's also more information on the first generation student website um, with a list of resources as well. Yeah, and basically now that you know that we exist as a student organization that also brings every coming student an opportunity to directly connect with us. And if they don't know where to find more support, like from staff or from faculty, we can redirect them. So that's the whole idea, the whole point of this student organization is for current first gen, undergrads, grads, international, domestic, but also for these future Bobcats like you are right now. Awesome, thank you to both of you for that. Um, Mackenzie, this is more a, a question for you again. Um, are there specific first generation student, um, maybe engagement opportunities that happen every year at MSU, or is it only this year, or is there specific things that happen um, every year that students can really look forward to as a first generation student if they're coming later on? Absolutely. So um, each year, Montana State participates in the National First Generation College Celebration. So this happens the week of November 8th every single year. So this year, um, we are having the events that um, Natalie, Floor, and Jesse had all kind of talked about. We have our student panel. This will be the second year we're hosting that. Um, we also do snacks on the mall. So during that week, 
Uh, the committee and the First Generation Student Association are out there handing out donuts and coffee and stickers and talking to first generation students um, just to get them excited about their identity and maybe even let them know that they are first generation students because a lot of students don't know that they are until they kind of see this event happening. Um, each year we also are holding a photography exhibition of first generation student faculty staff on campus and what it means to them to be first gen. Um, and that's held in the library for this week as well, the week of November 8th. Um, if you want to look at that virtually, it's actually on the first generation website. So montana.edu slash first gen. Um, and you're able to look at those and just kind of see what current students, faculty and staff um, think about being first gen either on campus or just in general. And then this year we are doing that speed networking event um, and our events, our, our event lineup just keeps growing every year. So last year we had like two days worth of events and this year we have a week and a half worth of events. So as our um, efforts grow, our event list is growing as well, which is really exciting. But yeah, it's every single year, um, the week of November 8th, um, and sometimes it spills over into the week before or the week after. So um, something to look forward to every single year in the fall, um, just right before everybody heads home for a uh, fall break. And then the um, FGSA will also be hosting events um, throughout the year as well. Um, so always something to look forward to. <laughs> um, but yeah, the first generation college celebration is the big main event for first generation students on campus to kind of celebrate um, and just kind of be heard. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Mackenzie. I also wanted to ask a question across the board for all of us. Um, and this is actually the question that Mackenzie asked us when we posed for the first generation headshots on the mall. Um, I would like to ask you all, what does being a first generation student mean to you? Whether that's while you're navigating uh, a graduate program, while you're navigating your own position at the university, what does that mean to you? How does that motivate you in your everyday work? I can go. Go ahead, Floor. Already answering. Oh, okay. Um, for me, being a first generation college student um, impacts a lot of what I do in my just daily job. Um, on top of working in the trio office, I also teach some classes as well. So I really take in the fact that I'm first generation and I utilize that um, in a way that I'm able to treat my students and teach my students um, in a way that's not hindering their understanding of content. So I think a lot about the hidden curriculum of higher education and I try to kind of break that down for my students because it wasn't something that was broken down for me when I was in undergrad and now in graduate school. Um, so just making areas that I am in on campus more accessible um, and easily understood for students is what I really um, do with my first generation identity because I have been in their shoes and I know um, how difficult it can be uh, when you get to campus and people are like, what's the registrar? What's the provost? And not really understanding what those things are. So to me being first gen is just being very resilient and being willing to take down challenges that other people may not have to do and don't recognize that you're actively doing. Awesome, thank you, Mackenzie. Floor, uh, Natalie, Jesse, do you wanna go ahead and touch on that as well? Yes, uh, I can start. So uh, I'm Peruvian, so I am a first gen, uh, even back in Peru, I, I was also first gen, but I didn't know I was because this is the case for more international folks in our generations. It's very kind of like common, this idea of being the first um, going to, to college and actually earning a degree. So I, I got a bachelor's from Peru and then I moved here. I got my master's, my third master's in from MSU Billings. And then I came here for a second master. So I'm, I'm currently a grad student. But being a first gen also means um, an opportunity that my family didn't have. So I'm doing my best to, to thrive here. 
but I'm also very willing to help other first-gen students navigate college life because I know it's very different and, and challenging. So I am the only one here uh, in the States from my whole family. Um, and it's kind of like a very, uh, it's a situation or um, a scenario that I feel very proud of. And that pride also allows me to be, like to keep myself learning best practices for first-gen students, because I see that in my current uh, student organization at FGSA, we have undergrads who are in their very first semester, which I love because we have these like very different group of, very diverse group of students helping each other. So even in my in my job as a grad assistant in the grad school, I also try to, to have a more common language among all the applicants because that's part of my job. So I think it's a very humble, but also empower, empowering um, task, job, passion. Um, so yeah, that's that's part of my identity now. Okay, so yeah, so again, my name is Jesse, but um, I just graduated high school and it is my first semester. So I'm still like navigating the college life and figuring out, um, you know, what am I even doing here? Getting co um, courses out of the way, planning my next um, few years. And a lot of times it can kind of get like overwhelming. Like, you know, we could go out stressing a little bit, registering for next semester, thinking I was behind because you don't necessarily know all the ins and outs from like your parents. You didn't kind of quite learn all that. Um, but I just I just rethink about it and I take it as like an empowering thing. Like, I okay, I'm a first gen student. I am the first in my family to go to college. Um, I personally am the first in my family to like graduate high school. Um, so I just use that thing. I'm like, hey, I've come so far. We're just gonna like, keep trucking along, keep finding your resources, keep reaching out to people. Like it is, it is all out there. No matter what, if you have a question, you can go onto the like MSU website, just find it. It is somewhere, I promise. Um, and just continuing to um, keep on top of things and just remember that like you are in a position that um, like it is so empowering. It like you've come so far, and just to like you know pat yourself on the back a little bit and just remember that. Um, it is a little tougher, but it is absolutely worth it. And it is really amazing that you've come this far. So, yeah. Any questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank you all so much for that. Um, I know for me as a first generation student, having that definition and knowing what that actually means was very helpful for me. Um, when I started college, I did not think that I was a first generation student. I didn't really know what it meant. I'd never heard that term before. So um, being a first gen student and going through that college decision process on my own has really made me very passionate about making education accessible for all and kind of defining things for students that they wouldn't know right off of the bat, um, especially if their parents didn't go for college or go to college. Um, I know for, for me, you know, I work in admissions. I'm also a faculty member on campus, but in admissions, the whole reason that I decided to come to MSU is because of their commitment to Montana because of this land grant institution and because admissions visits every single high school in the state of Montana, no matter the size, that means that sometimes I get to be the very first person that helps these students understand that college is even possible for them. I might be the very first person who even lets them know that they are a first generation student. So um, I, I've become so passionate about that, especially in my position currently. And I really, I use my experience as a first generation student every single day in my work. And it really helps me to motivate um, or help helps uh, motivate me to help incoming students uh, through their own college decision process. So I, I really appreciate you all for just kind of giving us um, a little bit of information about that. Um, this question is for anybody. If any of you would like to touch on any kind of maybe diversity focused resources that are available at MSU for all students, not just first generation students. Is anybody able to touch on that topic at all? I can go. All right. 
So there, there is this Office of Diversity and Inclusion, and they oversee many of the efforts on campus. We have a senior officer working there, but she's not working by herself because every college has a, a very specific staff that got hired, and one part of their mainly or daily tasks is to work towards these diversity best practices, diversity and inclusion best practices. There's also a diversity and inclusion student commons that welcomes all students from different from different backgrounds, identities, and that's the place where we usually meet. And depending on how many members attend to our meetings, we can definitely look for a bigger space. But that space by itself is very comfortable. It always has snacks because that office understands that sometimes, or actually food security is a basic need and students need, need to be uh, healthy and, and being fed so that they can actually succeed academically. I know that for sure the, the Office of, of Disability, there, there's also a um, trio, of course, as Mackenzie mentioned, the Office of International Programs in case there, is a, there are some international folks looking for different supports. In FGSA, we are very collaborative with other student organizations. So we work uh, with different um, academic interests, but also with cultural student organizations because we believe that uh, mutual respect and, and meaningful conversations are basic, are essential for the development of every student. So I don't know if you have a specific question about something that you might be looking for, but if that's the case, we can uh, do our best to redirect you to the right person. Because at this point, we have already reached out to, to many departments and offices, so we feel very comfortable at redirecting people or redirecting students to the right department or office, depending on their needs. Fantastic, Floor. Thank you so much for your help on that. Um, this is going to go ahead and just wrap up our webinar. Um, I did want to mention, if you do have any questions about anything, I have our contact information here on the screen. This is the contact information for the Office of Admissions, for me, for uh, TRIO Student Success Services, and also for the First Generation Students Association. As I have mentioned, um, this webinar will be available on our YouTube on uh, tomorrow. So we will go ahead and send out an email to everybody who registered for this webinar, including a link to that recording in case you need to go back um, and kind of take a look at this. We do have a first generation student resources page that will also be included um, as a part of this recording, that QR code. But feel free to go ahead and explore our website, explore TRIO's website, explore all of it. Uh, we are here to answer any questions that you might have. So if you do need any help whatsoever, please just ask. We are all here to help. Once again, thank you all so much and thank you to our panelists. Thank you so much to um, our other admission staff for helping answer questions in the Q&A feature. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you again to all of our attendees tonight. This was really phenomenal. I'm so excited that you all joined us for this. Um, so thank you so much. Have a good night and go Cats.